Welcome back to Barca Buzz TV. My name is Adam, and Barca just won a huge win, 1-0 at the Camp Nou against third place in La Liga. Haven't been beaten in over two and a half months. La Real, Real Sociedad in the Copa del Rey quarterfinals. I was buzzing. I know all of you were too. Today we finally saw Dembele kind of put everything together in what has to be one of his best performances at Barca by far, scoring the winning and deciding goal. And just up and down the pitch, we had tremendous performances, right? I just, I loved it because we've been complaining in the last, you know, ever since the Bayern Inter games in the Champions League that too much of our play was reliant on getting the ball to the wings and kind of crossing it inside. And finally, Xavi has unlocked the team to build through the middle. And he's really done that with this four midfield system, right? With Frankie de Jong and Busquets, oftentimes as a double pivot. And then, you know, Pedri and Gavi up in the half spaces, uh, especially Gavi on that left side has really started to work well. And he chose the exact same lineup that we saw against Real Madrid in the Super Cup. I predicted that. So did all of us. I think we all knew what was coming, but it was still good to see, you know, Ronald Araujo, who haven't, hasn't played in a few matches because of a, a little bit of a knock, uh, you know, uh, Frankie de Jong, who also hasn't played because of a knock, and then Christensen, who left laf last game against Getafe at halftime because of a knock. We knew they were going to come back, and we were pretty confident they would play, but it was still just such a treat to see us play, you know, our full team, because... This game, again, Dembele Masterclass, uh, everything seemed to work perfectly in terms of the midfielders, you know, being very fluid. At one moment, you would see Frankie de Jong, you know, in the same line as Araujo and Christensen trying to build up and help Ter Stegen get the ball out. In the other moment, you see him up front getting across uh, and almost putting it in for a goal. And I just really do think this four midfield system has kind of unlocked the best of a lot of players. Pedri, who thank God, is not injured. Uh, Xavi said after the match he'll be ready for the next game. Uh, it seems a little bit less utilized in this system, but Gavi, so, so aggressive, right? Almost had a goal today that went off the crossbar. Like I said, Frankie de Jong running around the pitch everywhere, kind of unlocking all of his best abilities, I feel like. And he is a little bit of a anomaly of a player in a sense in that, you know, he, he, he just he offers so much versatility that I feel like sometimes in a three man midfield, when we try to lock him into one zone, he you know, some of his talents are lost. And you just really have to commend Javi for figuring out how to have us playing our best ball at a crucial time. I know some people aren't too happy the fact that it was only one oh, right? Because um you had Real Sociedad in like the fifty sixth minute. Solaroth should have scored a goal. I mean clear as day should have scored a goal right at the end of that cross from Kubo and he just skied it uh, and then at the end of the game you know Marc-Andre Ter Stegen again up there with the player of the year so far for Barca had two huge saves to make sure that you know we, we secured the win uh, we were playing against 10 men due to the red card and the awful refereeing of Gil Manzano throughout the game but Ter Stegen, it should be said, was a little bit responsible for one of those opportunities with a little bit of a misplaced pass. But overall, the game was complete domination, right? From the start of the game until the end, um, it, we, we really did just dominate. It was only that last, like, eight minutes or so when Real Sociedad really threw all of their players up front uh, and tried to go for the tying goal that we saw them have some, some opportunities. But starting in that first minute, we really hit the ground running. Uh, and there, I have been talking about in the last few weeks that quote from Pedri, right, I, uh, after a game, uh, maybe against the Batiste game, where he said, you know, after we go up 1-0, we kind of turn off. In this game, that didn't really happen here. It wasn't a situation where, you know, we, we scored a goal and then shut down. Like I said, Gavi had an opportunity to score. Lewandowski had an opportunity. There, there should have been probably a few more goals on the, the list here, right? This game probably should have finished, I don't know, maybe like... 4-2 is, is how if, if uh, both sides were better at finishing, it would have it would have finished. And like I said, it wasn't necessarily that we turned off the switch. This is a Real Sociedad team that is really good, right? They're third in La Liga, and, and that's that alone should tell you how good they are, let alone the fact that, you know, they're on such an incredible stretch of form. We were a little bit fortunate that David Silva didn't play the game. Uh, Zuba Mendy, I think he's suffering from a little bit of an injury, and he only played half the game, if I recall. And so there was some fortune there, but you got to take a big win, a statement win against one of our top title contenders and be just so happy about it. I had some discussions uh, on Twitter and the DMs with some other Barca fans, and you know, some people were trying to say that we didn't play all that well this game. Uh, really, for me, we played beautifully. And, you know, the Camp Nou uh, standing ovation for Dembele, the Camp Nou just bustling with a huge attendance today really was a testament to that point. And I think where we really fell short was our finishing, right? 
Uh, Lewandowski scored a goal, but Dem- or Frankie de Jong was uh, offside and it deflected off of him in like the 10th minute. That was a bit misfortunate. Like I mentioned earlier, Frankie de Jong also had a pretty great opportunity uh, to put in a cross that just went wide. Um, Dembele in like the 16th minute, he had that you know nice run and that curler that just went wide. Gavi hit the post. So overall, it, it didn't wasn't the type of game to me where we just lack the ability to create chances. It was really all down to our finishing, and that is much more an issue with the players themselves than with Javi. And I I will just commend Javi right because I wasn't the number one believer in Javi. And you know when we came back from the World Cup break and we had that Espanol game that didn't go um, as well as I was hoping to see. I I wasn't sure how we were going to navigate. You know the Super Cup playing against. Uh, Real Batiste, Real Madrid, then coming up against La Real, and then you know the Manchester United game coming up, and it really does seem we are hitting our best form at the perfect moment, and I am just so overjoyed. Uh, like I said, best players of the game, it goes all around, but Dembele was just a cut above. Uh, to see him, you know, also shout out to Jules Koundé, who again is just such a tank on the defensive side, but also is really showing his ability to to run up, to, to, to play with Dembele. He gets the assist, right? That wonderful pass to Usman for the, the, the only goal of the game. Uh, there were other moments where he was running up and, and you know, receiving some passes from uh, Dembele, which is something we've sorely missed, right? Whether it was Sergio Roberto, uh, we, or, or, you know, we just haven't had players in that right back spot, Sergio Dest either, who were able to connect with Dembele and get the best version of him uh, out of him. And, and Kunde does seem to be that guy. And so, you know, even though there's always that debate about Kunde and whether or not he needs to be playing uh, only as a right back or if he should be a center back only, you know, at that right back spot, he's, he's putting out more offensive and defensive talent and skill and production than you know, a Barca right back in a long, long time, right? Maybe since Dani Alves. I mean, when you think about Semedo, when you think about uh, Sergio Roberto, when you think about Serginho Dest, no one has really worked well in that spot. And so I'm just so overjoyed to have Kunde, Ter Stegen, like I mentioned, two huge saves at the end of the game. I think the stat is in 2023, Ter Stegen has stopped, I want to say 18 of like 22 shots he's faced. And he's just been you know, a wall, right? The the, la- the the days of Ter Statue and all the memes about his inability to stop shot have really gone uh, to the wayside here. Not going to make a joke about how the hair transplants are bringing him confidence, but it is just wonderful to see. There was that moment I'll put up on screen where, you know, he just had a long ball out to Dembele that, uh, you know, was beautiful and almost resulted in a goal. And I, I do love to see, you know, Ter Stegen not only get getting his shot stopping abilities back, but also his ability to help us build from the back. Because if I think back to, you know, 2014, 15 season, 16, 17, when I think about Ter Stegen at the height of his abilities, it was never, as we all know, just about his shot stopping. It was also about his ability to, to deliver passes and to help build our offense. And uh, that had dipped in the last few years along with, the you know, his, his uh, ability to block shots. And so to see that both come together, really, really awesome to see. Alejandro Balde, what a... Uh, 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 great, great year he's having, right? He just continues to impress me. And I think in the last few weeks, what has really made me happy to see is to see him gain confidence. And you can really see it on the offensive side of the pitch. You can see him trying to make runs. You can see him, you know, playing uh, and being in a position to receive passes from Busquets at times when he was running up in this game. Uh, you see Frankie de Jong finding Balde oftentimes when he's one-on-one on that outside left uh, you know, flank getting ready to cross it in and t- to make a run and connect with, you know, Lewandowski. And so Balde has just been really good, right? And like I, I said, I think the main lens through which I view this game is just how this, you know, 3-2-2-3 three, two, two, three or 3-2-5, three, however you want to look at the, the system uh, Javi's put in place, it's really getting the best out of all of our players, right? Uh, Dembele, hey, he's always going to have inconsistencies. That's just the nature of the beast when it comes to Usman Dembele. But it does seem like ever since we've installed this uh, this formation, we're getting more great performances frequently from Dembele. And that is wonderful to see. Frankie de Jong, like I said, Gavi is getting more involved offensively. You know, he's always going to be that lion, right, who, who brings the energy and who's going to kind of you know, rough up opponents, which is something we've lacked uh, for a long time since, you know, we had Vidal or, or Paulinho or some of these midfielders who were more ready to tussle. And that's huge for the team. But then on top of it, he's a hugely talented technical player. And to see him make runs, to see his, you know, confidence in game knowledge increase uh, and really just peak in this game was wonderful for me. 
Lewandowski is a tough, tough guy, right? Because I think as he's come to this team, there's a few things I've learned about him. One, and today he almost again had some issues with, uh, I mean, everyone had issues with, with Gil Manzano, but he was really going at him. And, you know, I just hope in these big games coming up, and especially with the league season and him already facing that three-game ban he's uh, currently going through in La Liga, just hope he can keep it calm not get too uh too tussly with the with the refs uh i saw him throw up an elbow today but he got elbow too so you know i'm just hoping lewandowski keeps it calm the one thing i would say though what i was getting to is that lewandowski especially at the beginning of the season the one great thing i saw about him was kind of his build-up play his ability to run uh deeper into the midfield kind of have his back to the net and find passes in this new system that's a little bit gone and so in these games where he doesn't put away a goal it can sometimes feel like he's not uh, getting the end product we need but you know he had plenty of shots on goal today like I said if Frankie de Jong isn't you know just happens to be in the, the exact spot offside where that that shot was going he would have put us up 1-0 in the 11th minute and so I hope to continue to see him just um, you know use his moments wisely and keep his uh, his temper under control because he's going to be huge for us right uh, we've been talking about for the last few weeks here especially with the suspension he's in La Liga who's going to score goals for us today it was Dembele you know in the Super Cup final it was Pedri and Gavi and against Getafe it was Pedri too and so this is a, a good moment right we have to be as happy as we can be you know I do think uh, especially with some of the subs that Javi put in today you can kind of see he's trying to avoid the issue we faced in the first half of the season especially with Araujo, Christensen, uh, Eric Garcia when he was on form picking up injuries that you know kind of screwed our Champions League away but you know you see Balde come off in the 78th minute you see Pedri get that knock he was kind of forced off but you see uh, as well Dembele come off and you know we see Kessier come on we see Fati come on we see uh, Marcus Alonso come on so overall you know Javi's doing a good job uh, of rotating these 1-0 games are a bit hard to rotate but I think as opposed to the to other games we've had in 2023 where we've kind of shut off after the 1-0 lead. He saw that, you know, we were still going for the win. All of our teams still had energy, and so this was, uh, you know, a time when he could make some substitutions and not be too worried. There are players like Rafinha who's going to have a bit of a hard time. Uh, you know, he came on in the 78th minute today, and then we moved Dembele over to the left-wing spot. He's going to have a little bit of a hard time if this four midfield system stays, getting, you know, as much as many minutes as I think will make him happy. But he continues when he comes in to, to try and make the most of it, and I'm, I'm hoping he continues that good form because, like, uh, you know, we've talked about his, his output in terms of goals and assists has definitely been up higher in the last 10 to 15 games or so. Um, Eric Garcia, I feel a little bit bad for. Saw a little bit on the Twitter timeline talking about it, at Barca Breakdown, follow me, or at Barca Buzz. Uh, you know, Eric Garcia has kind of been thrown to the wayside, right? The the first narrative of the first half of the season was, okay, Eric Garcia is kind of coming back from the, 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 obviously the penalty against Frankfurt in the second minute. He's performing better. Even today, instead of Eric Garcia coming in for Christensen, uh, it was Marcus Alonso who came in. So I'm hoping, you know, he, he, he doesn't get too dejected and he gets some rotational minutes because we need to keep everyone in tip-top shape because everything is going well, right? After so many of these games uh, that were important in the Champions League, La Liga, Copa del Rey, the last few seasons we've been upset. Today, I think I'm pretty happy, and I hope you are too. I hope you let me know in the comments how you felt about the game, what you think uh, the rest of the season will bring on, especially this Manchester United game. Let me know. Thank you all.